Normally, when you take a world cruise, you'll book it months or years in advance, but I only booked this cruise a few days before it departed. Usually I cruise with my young children, but I didn't think they'd enjoy this ship. So I left them at home and went by myself. The cruise departed from Liverpool, and from when I walked into the cruise terminal until I walked onto the ship took less than five minutes. It was at this point that I realised that this was nothing like the type of cruise I was used to. Where was everyone? I'm used to cruising on the biggest ships in the world in the school holidays. Borealis was the smallest ship I've ever been on. It's around a quarter the size of the mega ships that I usually cruise on. And because this cruise wasn't very popular, it was only around 25% full. As I stepped on board, I was greeted by the captain. Although I didn't realise this at the time because you never usually see the captain of a cruise ship. Even though it was only midday, my room was ready for me. So I went straight there. And I didn't have far to go because my room was on deck one. It wasn't underwater though, and it even had a big window. I booked the cheapest cabin that was available, and I was really impressed by how big it was. Borealis was built in 1997 and spent 23 years sailing as Rotterdam for Holland America Line before being acquired by Fred Olsen Lines in 2020. Being a ship from the 90s, I thought that the furnishings might be dated and tatty, but that wasn't the case at all, at least in my room anyway. Some areas of the ship were very 90s, but I'll get to that later on in the video. My room had a huge shower, which was twice the size of the standard shower you'd expect on a cruise ship. And there were so many wardrobes. I only had clothes for two nights, but if I was staying on for the whole 80 days around the world, I would have no problem unpacking here. Fred Olsen Cruise Lines mostly caters for retired people, and they really do make cruising as stress-free as possible. In my room, there was a manual with answers to every question you could possibly have. I think that's a great idea as it saves people from having to go to guest services to ask the same questions as everyone else. I also had a piece of paper with the time and location of where dinner would be. It even told me my table number and on the other side there was a map of the dining room so I could see exactly where I'd be sitting. Fred Olsen doesn't have an app and you don't even need a mobile phone to cruise with them. Instead you get a paper guide to keep in your pocket and I love that. In the room they gave me some postcards so I wrote these for the kids. Then after unpacking I headed to the buffet to get some lunch. I had a salad from the salad bar, it was really fresh and delicious, followed by some pasta from the pasta station. Luckily I do like chilies. Next I went to explore the ship. I stepped out to the buffet and into this outdoor area and here I spotted something that I found really, really strange. When this ship was Rotterdam for Holland America Line, she had an outdoor pool at the back. But when Fred Olsen bought the ship and refurbished it to become Borealis in 2020, they got rid of the pool. Now, I might be wrong, but it kind of looks like you can see where the pool was. And I might be wrong in this too, but those flower beds, they look suspiciously like hot tubs to me. In the middle is a fake river with some koi carp painted on the bottom, which is quite cute. It looks like the kind of area that a toddler would make a beeline for, but luckily there weren't any toddlers to worry about on this cruise. Walking around the ship, I was really impressed by how spacious it was. I would expect that you'd have no problem getting a sun lounger here, even on a sunny day. There was an indoor pool with a retractable roof and a couple of hot tubs too. And the ship had lots of nice bars and lounges with all the drinks you could want, including a really decent selection of cocktails. As I was walking around, I saw a sign for the observation area. This was pretty hidden and I think that most people would have missed it, but it was a really cool area at the front of the ship. Another viewpoint that I loved was the observatory, which was right at the front of the ship and up at the top. I had another cocktail, watched the sunset and then headed back to my room to put on some 80s music and get ready for the evening. As I went to get into the shower, I was a bit confused because the bath mat came in its own little bag. I opened it up and it wasn't the kind of bath mat I was expecting. But then I found an actual bath mat, so I used that instead. At dinner in the main dining room, there weren't any vegan starters on the menu, but there were two vegan mains. So I had both of those. First, I had a celeriac steak, which was absolutely delicious. And then I had a vegetable curry and that was lovely as well. I'm not a dessert person, so I ordered the mixed sorbet but then the waiter surprised me by also bringing out a poached pear that he thought I should try. It was all right. After the meal, I went to the toilet and I was shocked by just how big the bathroom was. I'm not sure why, but it had a whole area for doing your makeup. Next, I went to the theater and watched a show that was about all the different countries of the world. This was perfect for a world cruise and the costumes were brilliant. Sometimes I do get a bit bored if it's just singing and dancing, but I definitely wasn't bored here. This was one of the best shows I've ever seen. 
After the show, I went to watch some live music and then headed to bed because I knew that I wanted to get up early to make the most of my short time on board. In the morning, I went for breakfast in the main dining room. I had a lovely seat near the window. On the menu, there was a section for healthy options. I ordered the chocolate bowl just because I was intrigued as to what it was. It was really, really sweet and chocolatey and I didn't like it. It probably wasn't healthy, but it was definitely different and I'm glad that I tried it. I also had a vegan cooked breakfast, which was really nice. After breakfast, I went for a swim and spent some time relaxing in the hot tub. I had both of the hot tubs and the pool to myself and there wasn't another person around the whole time. It was blissful. Borealis has an art studio on board, so at 11 o'clock I went to a craft class and made some earrings. We did have to pay for the materials, but it was only £5 for two pairs, which I thought was fantastic. For lunch, I ate in the buffet again and had some bean stew, chips and salad. It was really nice. Then I went for a stroll around the promenade deck. The promenade deck wraps around the whole of deck three. I walked around it three and a half times, which is equal to one mile. It's really sheltered so you can get exercise outdoors even if the weather's bad. This is perfect for a world cruise. There are some chairs here as well, but you're not allowed to sit on them. They're reserved for the people whose cabins have sliding doors out onto the deck. Next, I headed to the gym and did a stretch and relax class, which was fun. And at the end, we were given a smoothie as a reward for participating. Then I went to the pub, which had a very realistic fireplace. I played bingo and I won! The ticket cost £15 and the prize was £18, so I didn't quite win enough to stay on the ship for the World Cruise. I got changed for dinner and went to the bar where there was a James Bond theme night. There was an ice sculpture and some martinis, which I think were just for show. I ordered an apple teeny and watched the singers. Soon it was time for dinner. I'd pre-ordered, so they were able to make me a starter. It was a Stilton and Walnut salad and the Stilton had been switched for vegan cheese, so I was really impressed with that. I also had a vegetable hot pot and some sorbet. After dinner, the waiters came round to offer us drinks. One of the brandies on this tray cost £475 per glass, so I didn't have one. Next, I went to watch the comedian. He was really funny. And then I went to bed because we did have to disembark at 7.30am the next morning. I had a really good time on my Fred Olsen cruise. It was totally different to the type of cruise I usually take, but I found it so relaxing and met lots of lovely people. I do plan to film more of my cruises, so if you enjoyed this video at all, please consider hitting that subscribe button and then you can see what I get up to next time. On my next cruise, I will have the kids with me though, so I expect it'll be pretty different.